All right, everybody always wants to know how to mix up sugar syrup. And you know, I've never read any books or anything on it, um, but it's pretty simple. It's just sugar and water. Now people recommend one to one ratios, two to one ratios, three to two ratios, all this other stuff. The most important thing about it is if you are in a colder climate where condensation within the hive and cold temperatures can be a problem, you wanna mix up the heaviest syrup possible so the bees have to do do the least amount of drying down, therefore the least amount of um, moisture in the hive, excess moisture, but at the same time you don't want it so thick that it just settles out immediately um, when it gets cold on top of the hive. So what I run down here, uh, you know, it's Houston, Texas right now, it's November 16th and it's about 75 degrees outside, um, you know, it doesn't get real super cold, at least not until, yeah, about January is our coldest month. So. Anyway, I mix this up just real simple. To be honest with you, I don't know what the ratio is. I'm gonna try to measure it out tonight. So what I've got, 25 pound bag of sugar. I buy that at Sam's Club. Uh, I think it's, I think it's 40 cents a pound. It's either 40 or 60, but I think 40 cents a pound by buying it in bulk like that. If you're going to Walmart and buying it to the retail stores, um, the biggest bag you can get is a 10 pound bag and it's about $10. So. Of all the different brands at Walmart, it's about a dollar a pound there. I go buy the 25 pound bags. Basically, I went to Sam's Club. I paid $45 to sign up to be a member of Sam's Club. I bought 150 pounds of sugar. And in doing that, I saved, you know, 60 cents times 150, whatever that is. Basically, at 100 pounds, I'd save $60. So I had already covered uh, my cost of signing up and then everything on top of that's gravy. So if you're buying a lot of sugar and you don't want to try to buy it, I, I even actually price checked this against. Um, places like Man Lake and stuff where you can buy big, big bags, uh, 50 pound bags and stuff like that. And, you know, I love Man Lake. I talk about Man Lake all the time, but this was the cheapest, best price I could find. And this is Imperial. This is pure cane sugar. There's no bleaching, nothing gone with that. It's just pure cane sugar. So anyway, 25 pounds of sugar, some indetermined amount of hot water. I had it to a rolling boil, turned it off about 20 minutes ago, so it's still, it's still steaming pretty good. Um, but I'll let it cool before I put it on top of the hives, actually. Uh, Five-gallon bucket. I use my honey bucket for my feeder bucket because I can set it right up on top of the hive, on top of the top feeder, and then just open the gate valve and let it run out of the top feeder. And I've got a half-gallon pitcher here. Now, I'm not going to measure exactly half a gallon, but I'm just going to I'm gonna pour in my sugar, and I'm going to dip in half-gallon at a time to try to get an idea because people always say, you know, let's just say it's a one-to-one -one ratio, is that one pound of sugar to one pound of water or is that one cup of sugar to one cup of water it's a very key difference due to the different densities so i'm going to mix up this race this mix here knowing that i have 25 pounds of sugar and i'm going to measure out how many half gallons of water it takes and then i'll have to go back and sit down and actually calculate it up with the densities of water and the density of sugar and everything else to see but anyway it's real simple so really thrilling stuff how, you guys hold on to your seat big bag of sugar Going in the bucket. See, look at this. I'm getting action shots for you. This is what it's all about. Oh, that sugar dust kicked up, got on my tongue. That's amazing. Nothing like just pure dry sugar on the tongue to make you feel like a man. All right. 25 pounds of sugar in. Most importantly, I get my own little special dose of sugar. Mm -mm -mm. Gotta have an urge to keep you ticking. And then I'm just going to take my half gallon pitcher here, dip it in. That looks like about a half a gallon. And pour it in on the sugar. Do not pour it on your foot because it is hot, 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 hot. And it's kind of funny to see as it starts dissolving all the bubbles. All the bubbles that are coming up. And you can see like little cavity there formed where I poured in the sugar. Oh, I got mosquitoes biting my legs. Ah, right, damn it. So again, knowing this is a five gallon bucket too, that kind of gives me some idea what the end result's gonna be. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a known volume of two gallons of water. What's funny is you sit here and you add more and more water and yet the fluid level in the bucket doesn't rise. I mean, it does a little bit, but then you sit here and watch it and it dissolves down it makes space so you know if you're a chemistry buff and you're into that kind of cool nerdy stuff it's neat how the uh, 
the combined volume of sugar and water as it mixes, it actually reduces in volume. <sighs> and I guess it could be the water trickling in through the airspace, but see, it looks like it stopped bubbling, and then it'll start bubbling again. So let me get one more half gallon here for a total of two gallons, and I'll stir it up, and we'll see what it looks like. This is a, uh, just so you guys know, certified stir stick. Um, nominal dimensions, half inch, made of uh, solid PVC. So, you know, make sure when you mix the sugar water that you get the proper stir stick. Um, they also make a wooden variety uh, that usually can be found on the floor of your garage. So, for the sake of this, I'm not going to use this dirty, nasty end. I'll use the clean end. So, we're just going to hook her in here. Hook her. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. And now you can see it really starts to boil because now I'm getting it worked up. I mean, it... it, it <laughs> That's funny. It, it acts like it actually is physically boiling. It's not. It's just all the air bubbles escaping as I stir that sugar. And as it dissolves down. And you'll see now, my fluid level is dropping significantly. Now you want to have basically the thickest syrup you can with 100% dissolution of the sugar in the water. So, you know, I probably could have actually stopped this at three half gallons. And, uh, still start it. But it's pretty... It's pretty heavy, so I'm gonna have to actually put the camera down here and uh, work it for a little while with both hands to uh, see if it all dissolves or if I need to add more water. 25 pounds of sugar with only two gallons of water. So, amazingly enough, you're looking at a five gallon bucket that is over four fifths of the way full, but just to be conservative, we'll say it's four gallons. So, with 25 pounds of sugar, and only two gallons of water, I've made a four gallons of solution. So this thing is heavy, heavy, heavy with sugar, which is good. Now it's very hot right now, it's basically boiling. And of course the interesting thing with, um, you know, any sort of uh, solution that's dissolved, it has stuff dissolved in solution, um, as it cools, the solubility of the sugar in the water actually decreases, but you can see as I stir this, it actually has I mean, I can feel it. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it's it's thick. It's very thick. Um, so it might actually deposit some sugar back out as it cools. I'm not sure. I looked up all of the saturation limits the other day, um, and I think sugar and water at I think at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, it said that it could it could hold. Um, basically two grams of sugar for every one gram of water which is naturally a two to one ratio so it works out well um, now that would be mass or in our case weight um, volumetric now uh, this solution here pound for pound this is 25 pounds of sugar and only 16 pounds of water or just over 16 so this is a uh, roughly three to two solution of sugar to water so we'll just have to see as it cools off. Um, I'd like to put it on the hives tonight, but I don't know if it'll cool fast enough. Uh, I'm probably going to keep stirring it here periodically, try to help it cool off. But anyway, this looks like it's going to work for now, so I'm going to put this out, and then we'll see as the bees take it. We'll see if it settles back out and if I should have mixed it back up. You know, I'm tempted, like I did before, to want to top this jug off with water so that I can get more volume, I can fill more feeders, but at the end of the day, all I did was make a more thinned out solution that the bees have to work harder to dry down so you're better off to you know in my opinion you're better off to put together basically the heaviest syrup you can so that's the least amount of work that the bees have to do you feel like you're putting out less food but really you're putting out more food because there's less water they're having to take back out of it so anyway real simple um, nothing fancy about it and we'll uh, see how it works out